I am 19 years old and my parents are in their 50s. For as long as I can remember, I have been allergic to several things, dairy, wheat flour gluten, legumes. Since I was a young child, my parents have completely kept all of them out of our house. While other kids ate breakfast cereals, I ate fish and assorted pickled vegetables for breakfast. While other kids had Lunchables, I had grilled chicken or fish with, again, assorted vegetables, usually sweet potatoes. While other kids ate birthday cake at the birthday party, I had an apple. I never questioned this until a couple of months ago. I was at my aunt's house for my birthday party, and she made brownies for everyone. For me, she took great steps to make them with almond flour and avoided all of my allergies. I started eating them and thought little of it until my aunt suddenly looked at me and, in a panicked way, asked which plate I took the brownies from. I pointed from the one where I got my brownies, and she immediately stood up and told me we had to get my EpiPen. She raced to ask my mother for it, and I sat there scared out of my mind because I had never mistakenly eaten flour before. I noticed my mother had calmed her down, and then she said that we don't have to worry because she had switched the plates of brownies, and after all I had eaten the ones made with almond flour. I found this incredibly odd because, really, why would she swap the plates? That doesn't even make sense. But for the time being I let the issue rest. It didn't sit well with me for about a week and I finally went to get an allergy test. The doctor started with a skin prick test, and lo and behold, I didn't react to any of the above substances. Then he ordered a blood test, and when the results came in, they said that I had absolutely no intolerance to any of the foods I'm supposed to be allergic to. I was furious and called my mother. She eventually admitted that she lied to me because she wanted me to be on a paleolithic diet, and wanted me to be able to avoid all temptations. She raised me with a lie about her own health, but she keeps insisting that I try to see it from her perspective. She spams my phone with messages about how healthy I am that I never had acne, that I have been in great shape my whole life, that I have strong teeth and bones, and even that I got onto a D1 college tennis team. She has started calling me ungrateful for her intervention and insisting that I really should be glad I never got carb addicted. I don't know what to think. I carried around an EpiPen for all those years, one that I suspect may be fake seeing as my mother never got me to replace it, and I don't even know anymore. Am I an idiot and an ungrateful son for losing it over this? Not the idiot. You spent your entire life thinking that you could easily die because your mom wanted you on a special diet? Allergies are incredibly serious and while you can grow out of them, to be lied to is unnecessary. What your mom did was manipulative and poor parenting. She easily could have had you on a diet like that without lying and making you fear for your life. Tell your aunt about your mom's lie. She should know that your mom made her put in extra effort for who knows how many times, and caused her to go into a panic about you potentially having an allergic reaction, when in reality your mom had lied about your allergies. I feel bad your aunt went through that. What your mom did was so terrible. She needs to face the consequences for her actions. Cut contact until she understands just how bad her actions were. Not the idiot. She did not need to do this. Many people grow on different diets and food restrictions without needing to be lied to. It's not about temptation, it's about education. If she went so far as to always make food and desserts that didn't have the things she told you are allergic, she didn't need to lie. Now you know the truth and not only ruined your relationship with her, erased all trust you had on her, it will also make you consume everything you couldn't. And I say, go for it. Choose your own diet and keep away for some time. Now that she doesn't control this part of you anymore, she can get a little crazy. So I, 24, have been living with one of my best friends, 25, for a few months now. In general it has been great, we are both pretty tidy, considerate of noise usually in ALS about having guests over. I used to live with some real slobs so it's a really nice change. Just to preface, we've both realized we are spending a lot more on bills because of quarantine and so agreed to try to cut down on our usage. This is especially important for me as I work and live on a stricter budget than her as she is unemployed but her family are well off and send her money every month. She is looking for work though but she's got an arts degree and for obvious reasons the job market isn't great at the moment. As people we are pretty different in some ways but it has never really been an issue. She's fairly old-fashioned, believes guys should always pay for her dinner, she only goes out if she's got a full face of makeup, sticks her pinky out when she sips her drink etc., anyway, 
She's also been taught this idea that women should just somehow be ashamed of bodily functions. Like she should somehow pretend a real lady never needs to drop the kids off at the pool. We talked about this once and I honestly don't care, I really don't want to talk about what she gets up to in there anyway. What is becoming an issue is that for her to relax enough to take the Browns to the Super Bowl she has to leave the shower running and play music full blast on the off chance I may hear her so much as flush. This can go on for nearly half an hour till she is relaxed enough. I mean, this draws more attention to the fact that she's crapping than anything else but she doesn't see it that way. It didn't bother me at first but an extra half an hour of hot water once or twice a day is adding up and also it has happened multiple times now that I've had to have cold showers because she's used up the hot water. I've mentioned it briefly before but she was mortified and shut it down hard, even after I made it clear there were no judgments. Would I be the idiot if I asked her to get help or mentioned it was an issue? You would no be the idiot, but don't use the words get help. I'd use an I feel statement instead. If she's still adamant about using the shower the way she is, I'd make her pay the water bill entirely. She's using it the most and if it's that concerning to her, she can pay for it. You'd have to plan your day where you're showering early enough or late enough that she's asleep so you can get hot water, but at least she's paying for that water. If she refuses, I'd just find a new roommate, when you can, if it bothers you that much. No idiots here. I was raised in the same manner as the roommate. Women do not fart nor do we poop. I have the same problem being comfortable and relaxed enough to get it done when others are around. Just a few weeks ago, I left my own house, I live alone, boyfriend had stayed the night, to get Starbucks just so I could go to the local grocery store and do my business. While traveling, my body refuses to poop. I've gone 8 days while camping. My suggestion would be to ask her if it would help if you went for a walk? She could say something like, hey can you go check on the neighbor's cat? and you could give her some privacy. Not the idiot, but I'm flabbergasted by the proportion of people that think running cold water is a good solution. It's so extremely wasteful. This would be an absolute deal breaker for me. My country is currently going through a never seen before drought. It's so bad, that some cities ran through their water, meaning there was no running water for a day or two. And I'm talking about the mild climate of Western Europe, not some remote, arid desert. We went months without rain, and people still don't seem to get it. The water shortage is in my top 3 list of worldwide, immediate concerns. Running a shower to mask the sound of your bowel movements is inexcusable in my opinion. Back in December I found out I was pregnant by my then fiancé. There were lots of mixed feelings because it wasn't planned, and we weren't prepared, but we did want the baby. I suggested adoption but he told me if I wanted to do that he would refuse to sign away his rights and him and his parents would raise the baby without me. I wasn't okay with my child being raised with the story of your mommy left us when you were born especially because it's not that I didn't want the baby, so I agreed to keep it. My own father left right after I was born so I think he was counting on me feeling emotional about that. Fast forward. Throughout all of this, I was forced to do some growing up. Unfortunately, he didn't grow up with me. And along the way I realized he had a lot of abusive, controlling tendencies. So, very recently and with my mom's support, I decided to leave him and temporarily raise the baby in my mom's home. The name we agreed on was a first name of my choosing, except not really, it was super far down my list because he kept shooting down everything if he had so much as even met someone with that name before, his first name is the middle name, and his last name. I've never really been a fan of the name because I guess I feel like I didn't get much of a say. My one major request was no S sounds of any kind, S, Z, X, soft C, etc. Because I have a slight lisp that makes me self-conscious, and even that was ignored, my ex's name has an X in it. So here we are, 7 weeks before my due date, and I don't like the name we've chosen for our son, especially because now it's almost entirely my abuser's name. Previously I agreed to give our son his last name because it seemed like the logical thing to do. We were engaged. Within a few years it was going to be my name too. Why not? But now I'm having second thoughts. Would I be the idiot if I changed his middle and her last names? My mom thinks I'd be justified in giving him my last name, I'm fighting for sole custody anyway. No you would not be the idiot, that is your baby. You are carrying that child and giving birth to it. He chose not to do the growing he needed to do in order to be in that baby's life and you are not required to abide by him in naming that child that you are aiming to raise on your own. 
You can name that kiddo anything you want and I actually think baby having your last name when you're going for soul custody would be best. No idiots here, have you considered that you may have BPD, borderline personality disorder? A lot of this seems to be rooted in some fantastical, magical thinking expectations that you're imposing on the father of your child. Calling this abuse and some of the other things others have noted in the thread are really indicative of BPD-influenced behavior. I think you need to start seeing a personal therapist immediately, and should probably get couples therapy of some sort as well. BPD is unfortunately very stigmatized, but with treatment most people can get better and integrate with others in their lives in healthier ways. Best of luck. It's amazing how women complain about man that wanted to be in their children's lives yet look at all these women getting screwed up advice to a woman that was purposely trying to limit and control how much a man get to see his child, because they can't get along in a relationship. Didn't even want the child yet you are fighting for soul custody? And what's the child grows up with a bad relationship with his father, who are you going to blame? The father for not growing up to your standards or yourself? You are the idiot. So my daughter is in a sorority, which I 100% supported. My wife and I paid for her dues and supported her when when she asked if we would be okay with it. Unfortunately, last week I found out something very upsetting. My daughter was trying to enroll for classes but it holds on her account with prevented her from doing so. She called the university to get everything sorted out. When I asked her what happened she told me her sorority was in hot water for underage drinking and they all had to take an online course about alcohol and student conduct on campus. When I asked why she didn't tell me this before she told me she was too embarrassed too. I don't know why, call it intuition I guess, but I didn't believe her. I decided to do some research on my own and stumbled across an article written by her school's newspaper about a Halloween party thrown by her sorority and their brother frat. Since this isn't a debate sub, I don't want to say exact details but I will say the theming of the party was very offensive. In the article was a screenshot of an Instagram post from the party and there I saw it, a picture of my daughter in an insensitive costume. When I confronted her about this she immediately became frustrated and told me it's not that big of a deal and she didn't tell me because she knew I'd blow it out of proportion. I decided to leave the room and go talk to my wife about the situation before I said something I'd regret and my wife and I both decided that we will no longer pay for her sorority dues. Both my wife and I support equality and have always taught those morals to our daughter, to see her disregard them was very upsetting and we decided that we would not support our daughter in an environment which undermined those views. When we told her this she completely blew up, saying that we promised to pay for it etc etc. She also called us financially abusive as we both know that she would not be able to pay for the dues herself and finding a job is nearly impossible. She has one last payment due this semester and she doesn't have the money to pay for it. She talked to her sisters and they told her that they would be willing to give her an extension until the fall semester, but she is unsure if she will have the money then. Our daughter is very upset with us and thinks we're overreacting. She's been crying for a week and I have to wonder, am I the idiot for refusing to pay? Was our punishment too harsh? Not the idiot at all. I don't think you are overreacting. She's an adult. If she wants to do such terrible things then she must be prepared to stand by her offensive opinions and to enjoy the consequences of losing friends amongst decent people. She has several months to make things better for herself before she has to leave the sorority. Maybe she could use that time to become a better person. Not the idiot. Regardless of why, you don't have to pay her dues. My parents agreed to pay my tuition and rent and nothing more for college. That meant when I wanted to join my fraternity, I had to work part-time to cough up the money for dues. It made me appreciate being in my fraternity a lot more, I think. She was lucky enough to have her parents pay a year of dues and has obviously screwed up. I just don't see it as a big deal at all to stop paying her dues. You seem like a good parent. Make her learn from this experience by getting her to work over the summer or during the school year and pay her own damn dues. Not the idiot. She wore blackface and she's crying that she can't keep hanging out with the people who convinced her it was funny to wear blackface. You're completely right to cut her off from that and try to get her away from the environment. Gotta learn there's consequences to being a terrible person somehow. She can keep crying. She's not even upset that she did something awful. She's upset that she got caught by the university and you. Hasn't demonstrated even a little remorse. Why should you keep rewarding her when she's becoming a crap person? Good on you for putting an end to it. When I was 15, my mom left the family. 
For a long time, no one knew where she was or even if she was okay. Eventually, it was discovered that she was just too overwhelmed and left to handle herself. My brothers and I were raised by our uncle and my dad from that point on, but it was hard. I became like my brother's mom and had to grow up quicker than I probably should have. I got into therapy in a few years back and have been doing better. Recently, I found my mom on Facebook. It was by pure mistake because I reconnected with some other maternal family members that I guess are friends with her. She had the same first name and looks pretty much the same, with just a different last name. The more I looked at her page, however, I saw that she had gotten remarried not long after she left my dad and had basically started a new family. She has kids ranging in age from 2 to 10 years old. My husband told me to leave it alone, but I was so angry and I just couldn't handle it, so I ended up finding out her husband's FB and messaged him, saying that his wife had 5 other kids that she had abandoned, did he know that? My mom ended up messaging me, pissed, saying I had made her husband mad because he didn't know. To me, that's not my problem. You can't just run off and neglect my responsibilities. However, my brothers and husband think I was an idiot. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, because your action was justified. Building up for years being a mother to your brother. Seeing her being a mom to other children. Basically ignoring you ever existed. I'm sure it brought you to tears and anger. I don't care what anyone says, I feel you were in the right. Not the idiot. You're her kid. She did that to you. He has kids with her. Fair warning. If she doesn't like having to own being a crap person, she shouldn't be a crap person in the first place. And it's not your fault she hit her crap. How were you to know she didn't even mention you existed, let alone she bailed on you, and your sibs? That's all on her. That's her crap show. I don't know what's up with the idiot verdicts. From my perspective, all you did was tell the guy something he has every right to know. Your mother is 100% an idiot. In a relationship, trust is everything. That is one hell of a thing to lie about for so long. If I were him, I'd be questioning the foundation my relationship is based on. If she can lie about having five children, she can lie about absolutely anything. 